Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, time for a confession right off the bat. There were times, we will admit it, back in the dark ages of cable news, when we'd milk a single news event for weeks, in some cases, and we're talking to you, O.J. Simpson, for months and months and months. There just wasn't that much going on, so you couldn't afford to waste a good story. That is not the problem we are having these days. The problem now is the opposite, of course. There's too much going on, and some of it's terrifying. In just the last week, China signed a $50 billion trade deal with Saudi Arabia, old ally, signaling an end to America's longstanding global petro empire. That's not a small thing. Vladimir Putin, meanwhile, who runs Russia, once again threatened to launch a nuclear war on the West. Then Wall Street began laying off large numbers of people, which is not something you can ignore in an industry whose business it is to predict the future of the economy. And at the same time that was happening, the wealth of the average American household dropped to one of the lowest levels ever recorded. The CDC responded by trying to resurrect face masks, because that'll help. Sam Bankman-Fried got arrested. And then the Mexican drug cartels, which run the largest human trafficking operation since the transatlantic slave trade ended, now officially have control of our southern border. So it's been a busy week. In fact, more has happened in this past week than happened during two full terms under Bill Clinton. A lot. So if you're running our country right now, you'd be staying up all night, every night, trying to figure out how to respond. But that's not what the Biden administration is doing, not at all. This afternoon, as the old global order collapses to re be replaced by God knows what, the Biden people decided to hold a drag event at the White House, just in case you were wondering if those comparisons to Weimar were overstated. No, they're not overstated. The occasion for this celebration was the official signing of the Respect for Marriage Act, which the White House tells us will codify gay marriage into law. But wait a moment, you wonder. Wasn't gay marriage legalized by the Supreme Court way back under Barack Obama? Well, yeah. But they've legalized it again. It's double legal. And you know what that means. That means it's time to hear from Lady Gaga. Dance party at the White House. Hooray, what's been legal for years is still legal. Break out the White Claw. Cindy Lauper was there, of course, to celebrate. Cindy Lauper is going to be 70 years old this spring, meaning she's lived in this country a long time. But until today, until this afternoon at the White House, under the beneficent gaze of Joe Biden the Great, Cindy Lauper informed us that Americans were not allowed to love each other. Until today, love was banned. But Joe Biden changed that. And now we're free to love. Watch this and see if you don't choke up just a little. Our families are validated. And because now we're allowed to love who we love, which sounds odd to say, but Americans can now love who we love. And bless Joe Biden and all the people that worked on this for allowing people not to worry and their children not to worry about their future. Wait, didn't that happen 10 years ago? Well, we checked that tape is from today. The party was at the White House today. And that means that somewhere, our nuclear disposal friend, Sam Brinton, formerly of the Energy Department, is sitting atop a pile of stolen women's clothes, cursing the fact that airports have security cameras in the baggage claim. Damn those cameras. If only Britain hadn't been caught, this would have been like Christmas for him. He could have spent the morning in Cindy Lauper's dressing room trying to purloin a new halter top. Talk about a missed opportunity. Thankfully, Marty Cummings was there to make up for it. Cummings is a drag star who, like Sam Britton, has a long history of unfiltered social media posts. F the police, Cummings tweeted in 2020. Yes, we want to defund the police. Yes, we want to abolish ICE. No, we won't settle for anything less. We'll continue to fight for this to happen. End quote. That sounds like Antifa. Well, yeah. And to prove it, this year Cummings promoted something called ACAB Coffee, using the all but copyrighted slogan of Antifa. So here you have an Antifa-friendly drag queen dressing up like a woman and promoting violence. Talk about a perfect White House guest. And of course, Cummings is also interested in children in all the wrong ways. Cummings once tweeted this, quote, the kids are out to sing and suck to perform fellatio. Ooh, okay. Cummings had added, anyone who thinks drag isn't for children is wrong. 
Cummings then posted this picture with a child writing, he wants to perform with us next year. <laughs> so if you think it's unfair to accuse people of being creepy with kids, not that unfair, actually. Kind of fair. Here was Cummings at a TED Talk in 2019. I learned how the power of a 20-second video can change your life, how a 20-second clip can change your entire worldview. Take a look. That's me and two-year-old Brody at my drag brunch in New Jersey. So a lot of times families come to the brunch because they're not able to go to a regular drag show late at night, and it's a time that kids can experience drag. Because of Baby Shark, I was able to come to the Pilgrim House and do a series of kids shows. And I would ask the kids during these shows, I would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And to my surprise, a lot of these kids said they wanted to be a drag queen. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the kids want to be a drag queen. So that's the guy at the White House today, but not really an anomaly. It was just a month ago the administration invited a guy called Dylan Mulvaney. It's a grown man who identifies as a walking stereotype of a little girl, and he met the president. So what's going on here? Well, multiple things, of course. This is an effort to degrade the country, to make it into a joke. These are people striding through the hallways that once were the work area of, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt and FDR. Whatever you think of their policies, these were serious men who stayed up late every night thinking about how to make the country better. And now there's that guy, and a lot of people like that, and Cindy Lauper, celebrating gay marriage, which has been legal since the Obama administration. What is going on here? Well, again, it's an effort to degrade the country, but as a political matter, it's a distraction offend you so much or mesmerize you so completely that you forget that there are multiple world historic crises unfolding at the same time, some of which the Biden administration caused, none of which it can solve. That's the point. They have no idea what to do about the collapse of the post-war order, which is on display, or the continuing slow motion collapse of the American economy, which you feel because you're poorer than you were last year, and they don't have anything to say to you. Even if they cared, they wouldn't have an answer. Here's a drag show. Welcome to Weimar. Yeah, what happens next? But the point is, you lose any perspective about everything else real that is happening. This is a tactic. And it's not a new tactic, actually. Joe Biden once recognized this tactic because, if nothing else, he knows politics. Here's Biden in 2006, in a clip we were grateful to get, recognizing that complaining about gay marriage, whatever you think of gay marriage, is a pretty handy way for politicians to distract from their own failures. Here's Joe Biden. The world's going to Hades in a handbasket. We are desperately concerned about the circumstance relating to uh, avian flu. We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have enough police officers. And we're gonna debate the next three weeks, I'm told, gay marriage, a flag amendment, and God only knows what else. I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law, the Defense of Marriage Act, where we've all voted, not where I voted and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. <laughs> So he gets a pass because that was pre-dementia. He has no memory of saying any of that. Now he's just a vessel for the ambitions of others. But that was an interesting insight. People talk about stuff like this, particularly when it's not strictly speaking relevant, because they don't want to talk about other things. And that makes it even more interesting that Joe Biden's handlers, 16 years later, are telling him to talk about gay marriage and drag shows. Anything to distract you. And in fact, at today's bill signing, just to completely pull your attention away from everything else that's going on, Joe Biden came out in favor of both gay marriage, of course, because it's been legal for 10 years, and in favor of the general mutilation of children. Here he is. We need to challenge the hundreds of callous, cynical laws introduced in the states targeting transgender children, terrifying families, and criminalizing doctors who give children the care they need. We have to protect these children so they know they are loved and we will stand up for them 
and say they can seek for themselves. <laughs> it's pretty interesting when you think about it. So this is a bill signing affirming the legality, legalizing once again gay marriage, which most people support in this country. Should people get married if they love each other? Yeah, they should. That's fine. Not that controversial a point at this stage. But here's Joe Biden using that opportunity to promote gender affirming care for kids. And of course, that means the sexual mutilation of children, cutting the breasts off 15 year olds, sterilizing them for life with chemicals. That's what Boston Children's Hospital and many other hospitals have been doing. Puberty blockers, have fun with osteoporosis when you're 30. So why would Joe Biden be promoting that, apart from the fact certain special interest groups want him to? Again, this was supposed to be about gay marriage, but here you have Joe Biden, the president of the United States, purportedly pushing child sexual mutilation. And then you have, this is even weirder, Kamala Harris out there talking about contraception. Really? Watch. For millions of LGBTQI plus Americans and interracial couples, this is a victory. And it is part of a larger fight. The Dobbs decision reminds us that fundamental rights are interconnected, including the right to marry who you love, the right to access contraception, and the right to make decisions about your own body. Now we're just confused. The right to buy contraception. Now, no one on this show is a legal scholar, but Griswold versus Connecticut came down in 1967, which affirmed from the high court the right of Americans to buy contraception. That was 56 years ago. Interracial marriage? Hmm, that's been legal for our lifetimes. No one's trying to make it illegal. Not one person is pushing to make that illegal. Not one! So here you have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris affirming your right to buy the pill and marry someone of a different race, even though neither right is under attack by anyone. Why are they doing this? Well, it's of a piece with their agenda recently. Remember, this is the same party that pushed through an anti-lynching bill this year. Lynching! Was that on the list of major prop? Are there lynchings going on? Wasn't that already illegal? No, we just banned it for the first time. Watch. The Senate succeeded in taking long overdue action by passing the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. Hallelujah. Congress has finally declared lynching a federal crime. The people of our nation deserve the protection of a federal, a federal anti-lynching law. Lynching is not a relic of the past. Racial acts of terror still occur in our nation. Hate will not prevail in America. White supremacists will not have the last word. We cannot remain silent. Silence is complicity. Finally, after all these years, finally, made lynching a federal crime. After all these years, there are a lot of people who are for lynching, but we held off the pro-lynching lobby and we got this through the Congress. We've improved your life. Really, where are all these lynchings? Where are all these racial acts of terror committed by white supremacists? Search the internet for them. You will see some racial acts of terror. Hard to find a lot committed by white supremacists. Any, maybe. Where are the numbers on that? How many racial attacks by white supremacists have there been in the last couple of years? Maybe there've been a lot. We're not familiar with that. We're not aware that that actually happened. Pretty sure it didn't actually happen. We do know that nooses have appeared in various places. Do you remember that? There was one at the construction site of Barack Obama's new presidential library. Maybe that's what they're talking about. They offered a six figure award to catch the person who tied rope in a forbidden shape but no culprit was ever found. How weird. Then there was that news in the NASCAR garage. Then there was a news about Jussie Smollett's neck. Is that the lynching they're banning? The funny thing is, you know that's not real. And most people know it's not real. Why are they continuing to say this? Well, because as 
actual problems, real problems mount, and they have no answer and no solution, and they're trying to dodge culpability for creating those problems in the first place, they have to double down on fake problems. We're banning lynching. I mean, and no one laughed? <laughs> There's not one person who's for lynching. Bill Malugin and his team, speaking of real problems, just shot this new video of massive crowds of foreign nationals invading our country. Sorry, that's just true. Most of them are not from Mexico. They're from very, very far away across the oceans. And now they're in a Mexican border town across from Brownsville, Texas. And they're waiting there for Title 42 to end in eight days. And when that happens, when the Biden administration drops that last piece of legal defense against invasion, it's going to be an overwhelming wave, of course. Maybe that's why they're bringing drag stars and Cindy Lauper to the White House. Because they don't want to talk about, I don't know, the threat of nuclear war from Vladimir Putin? President Vladimir Putin appearing to dash hopes of a diplomatic solution, warns the war will be long and that the risk of a nuclear conflict is on the rise. But he quickly dialed back his language, insisting Russia would only use a nuclear weapon for self-defense, never first. It was more of a reminder than an overt threat. The risk is increasing, he said, adding, we haven't gone mad, we understand what nuclear weapons are. We are not going to wave it like a razor blade around the world. But of course, we must proceed from the fact that we have it. So we're now at war, a hot war, not a proxy war, a hot war with Russia. American military personnel, lots of U.S. government employees are in Ukraine fighting that war with American weapons that you paid for. And the guy we're at war with just threatened to use nuclear weapons against us. Now, whatever you think of that war, that's not a story. That's not bigger than banning lynching or legalizing gay marriage again when it was already legal or legalizing contraception, which has been legal since 1967, or interracial marriage. What? Talk about a head fake. Who's falling for this? Oh, everyone. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.